Oh, good morning, good morning, good morning. I was going to put an intro. I was going to throw an intro on this, and I figured, you know what? No. Um, it's the first podcast we've ever tried. First one, we're, it's our inaugural one. Um, let's just throw this on, see what happens. Um, I've got um, a couple of topics that I want to talk about uh, that are important to me. Um, they could be important to you. Um, pretty much everything I'm, I want to talk about today is going to be Canadian based. Um, so it's going to be for the U S um, viewers, uh, which we have a lot of, um, a lot of it's not going to affect you so much, but the tentative word here is yet. The tentative word here is yet. Whatever happens in Canada, eventually, it's usually the other way around. Whatever happens in the U.S. usually has a trickle-down effect, and it, it affects us here in, in Canada. Um, but in this case here, when it comes to some of the subjects and some of the things that I want to talk about here, it's, it's the opposite. Because Canada was the leader in getting screwed by the government. Our government did the major screwing over what, what, you know, what, what the federal government, U.S. federal government did to you guys. Um, on a world stage, right? On a world stage, let's put it this way. On a world stage, our prime minister was basically shunned and thrown out of certain certain uh, uh, meetings uh, at high government levels. And he was basically told, you know, get lost. Don't come back. We're not interested in you. You're a tyrant. You're a slave driver. Um, you're a dictator. And this was by other um you know, government, uh, heads of government, heads of uh, country government. So, um, again, it's not going to affect so much, say, the U.S., but we are going to uh, it, 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 just listen carefully. Okay, listen carefully, because a lot of it you're going to relate to somewhere down the line. Somewhere eventually this is going to touch on you or somebody you know. So, I got about, I think I got about 20, 25 minutes. So if you got a drive to do, you got about half hour drive, you're going to get groceries. Hey, listen, if you're on the road, you're driving, you got nothing better to do. You got 20 minutes to kill. 20 minutes is approximately 20 miles. So you want to kill 20 miles? Hey, I'll kill you 20 miles. Um, but I'm just going to quickly throw these at you and just see what you think. And you know what? Um, if you don't agree with what I'm saying here, some of it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to give you fact of you know, from, from government websites, government, this and that, like I, I'm not pulling anything or I'm not taking to tell you anything that was this guy said, because he heard it from that guy who heard it from this guy's sister's cousin's brother's uncle. Anything I tell you, it's going to come off a government website. It's been, it's been, you know, it's good to go from just, well, actually that's how bullshit, how, how much bull is that? Just because it came from the government doesn't mean that it's true, but if it is coming off a government website, what can you do, right? So the first one I want to touch on real quickly is uh, is Health Canada. Um, Health Canada has uh, has now authorized the new next round of COVID shots. The next round of COVID shots have now been authorized. And that was as of September 12th. So two days ago, three days ago, 2023 out of Ottawa, Health Canada. So Health Canada for the Americans, Health Canada is like your FDA. Okay, that's pretty much the same thing. Um, so um, Health Canada has authorizes, and it's, it's Moderna. Okay, it's authorized Moderna COVID-19 vaccine targeting the Omicron XBB uh, 1.5 subvariant. Sorry, I have to read that. There's no way in hell I'm going to have that memorized. And they did put out a quick statement. Okay, now, I want you to think about where we've gone and to where we are and to now where we're going. So follow this path, okay? Follow this path. COVID hit. It was bad. People died. It was unfortunate. People got sick. The planet Earth has not is never going to be the same. It is never going to go back. We are never going to go back to pre-COVID days of living. It's never going to happen. The only way that's going to happen is if you buy yourself an island, put 200 of your closest friends on it, close off that island, and go back to living the way you were living. That's almost impossible. You can't do that. So has COVID hit us? Yes. 
Has it changed our lives? Absolutely. Has it affected everybody on this planet? I would have to say probably yes, it has. So follow where this is going. COVID hits. What happens? Well, they throw a soup kitchen together, and that's what I call it. It's just a soup kitchen. It's, it's a milkshake, a soupy medical milkshake of crap. It's shit. Okay, they had a base. They had a base to build on for the COVID vaccine, the original COVID vaccine. They took it, didn't have time to test it properly, crammed it down our throats, forced us to take it. And if we didn't take it, they threatened our livelihood, our, our jobs, our homes, our lives, our, our way of li living. They restricted our movement. We couldn't travel within our own country or other countries. Um, basically, they, they put their hand around your throat and started squeezing until basically you couldn't breathe anymore and you had no choice but to take the shot. Now, if you have not taken this, the original shots, good on you. Good on you. I, I applaud you. Good on you. Um, my wife's cousin, I won't say his name, but you know, we had him and his, his lovely lady here uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he is still a true blood. That's what I call them, true bloods. Never had a shot. Love it. Absolutely love it. Um, am I a true blood? No, I've had to take, I've had to take both shots, unfortunately. Um, but the, so they, they crammed, let's get back to it. They crammed this shot down our throat and then by doing so, okay, by doing so they slowly loosened it off. Right. And they let us kind of go back to the way, but it, living is never going to be the same. They had mandates in place. The trucker convoy showed what that was all about. I was in it. My truck was parked right there on Wellington Street. I could look out the driver's side of my window and up there was there was the uh, parliament buildings. You know, we were in it. And we saw what the government did there. Mostly, let's say, when I say the government, I'm talking about Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Caucus. Justin Trudeau and his Liberal Caucus. You could take the us off the caucus. That's what you got. Trying to be polite here. So he takes, he, 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 he won't meet us. He won't talk to us. He won't do anything. He won't have anything to do with us. Labels us terrorists, freezes our bank accounts, threatens our, again, threatens our jobs, threatens our families. What government threatens your family? What government threatens to take your land? which they're still doing. What government threatens to take your job, makes you unemployable? What government does all of these things? And again, I'm saying, like, as I'm saying this, follow the line, right? Follow the, follow the, the path where this is going, right? And just so you guys know, the FDA in the United States has banned Moderna, the original Moderna shot and the original Pfizer shot. Now they are, looks like they are going to okay the second round for this new um, Omicron XBB dot or XBB.1.5 subvariant. It looks like they are going to okay that, but they have banned the original Moderna and Pfizer shots in the US, the FDA has. Would Health Canada do that? Hell no. Why? Because our government turned around and bought so much of this stuff, so much of this stuff that they can't get rid of it. They can't give it away. So now they got to use it. Do you know that I can leave my home right now as a Canadian? I can leave my home right now. I can drive into Kingston or I can drive into Napanee. And in both places, okay, both places, I can still see signs out front all the pharmacies, drug stores, um, grocery stores that have pharmacies in them, COVID vaccines available, come and get them. I, I shit you not. COVID vaccine, COVID-19 vaccines available, come and get it. There are still signs on our highway. Help stop the spread, get vaccinated. I don't know about any of you, 
But from what I know, um, none of these vaccines stop the spread. Okay, they don't stop the spread. Nothing stops the spread. <coughs> Cover your mouth. Wear a mask if, you, if, you're, if you're not feeling well. Um, everything else under the sun. But getting the vaccine, which is what they told us and what they're telling us now again, you know, you get this vaccine, stop the spread. It doesn't stop the spread. All it does, all this vaccine does, and, 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 and we'll pound it right down to the, the smallest, um, easiest way to understand. All this vaccine does is if you get COVID, it lessens your symptoms and makes it more comfortable for you to work your and your body to get through it. And even then, I'm not 100% convinced that that's the case either. Okay. I've had COVID. I've, I bet you, I'm pretty sure I've had it twice. Once I was probably asymptomatic, didn't even know I had it, just thought, oh, I'm not feeling so good. I'm a little stiff for a couple of days. And I didn't even know I had it. The second time I had it, I know I had it because I was tested. And I, I, I was positive. But, but what I'm getting at here is it doesn't, spread, it doesn't stop the spread. If, if you take one person with COVID and you put them in, a, in, in, in an airplane with 200 people that are vaccinated and he's walking around coughing, spewing, hacking and farting, burping and everything else under the sun, a lot of those people are going to get COVID. The fact that they've had the shot is not going to prevent them from getting COVID. All it does is if and when they do get it, it will lessen the symptoms and make it more comfortable for them. And like I said, I'm not 100% sure that they've, they've done that, um, that they, they've, uh, they've accomplished that. I'm just much myself personally. I'm not convinced. Um, so I, what I want to do here is I'm just going to quickly read you something. Okay. And this is, again, this is right off of Health Canada. Uh, Government of Canada, uh, Health Canada website from Health Canada. Uh, statement, September 12, 2023, Ontario, 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 uh, Ontario uh, Ottawa, Ontario, Health Canada. Health Canada has authorized the use of the, of the Moderna spike vax, they're calling it spike vax. COVID-19 vaccine targeting the Omicron XBB.1.5 subvariant for people six months of age or older. Health Canada received Moderna submission for its new COVID-19 vaccine on June 29th, 2023. After a thorough, after a thorough, these people must be crazy writing something like that. After a thorough, Health Canada has never been thorough. When it comes to COVID, they have never been thorough about anything. They've just made up their mind and crammed it down our throat. They didn't thoroughly investigate anything or thoroughly test anything. But they're saying here, now, now they've decided to be thorough. After a thorough independent review, that means that um, the health minister didn't actually do the review. It probably means his secretary's sister's uncle's nephew. He did, he did the review um, over Hockey Night in Canada last uh, couple, couple of months ago, back in, back in December or whatever. And, uh, and that's, that's, where the, uh, that's where the review was. Anyway, let's get back to this. Independent review of, in, of a, after a thorough independent review of evidence, Health Canada has determined that the vaccine meets the department's <laughs> stringent safety Efficiency and quality requirements. <laughs> God, you get you guys, you you gotta know what's going through my head right now, right? <laughs> oh my God, these liberals are great, aren't these guys awesome? It sounds good. I'll give them this. It sounds good. It's total BS, but it sounds good. According to the product label, now we're gonna believe the label on a, a, a vial of Moderna. <laughs> According to the product label, individuals five years of age and older should receive one dose regardless of their COVID-1 vaccination history. Oh, boy. Children between six months and four years of age should receive two doses if they have not 
if they have not been previously vaccinated with a COVID-19 vaccine or one dose if they have been previously vaccinated. So basically, if you've, if, if you've taken the two doses of the original vaccine, you only need to take one of these. I said it in five seconds. The government needs 30 minutes to say that. Health Canada is also actively reviewing submissions from Pfizer, Pfizer, seeking authorization of their COVID-19 vaccine targeting the Omicron XBB.1.5 subvariant for people six months of age and older. In addition, Health Canada has received submission from Novavax um, for their COVID-19 vaccine targeting the Omicron blah, 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 subvariant for people 12 years of age and older. These submissions are being reviewed on a priority basis by dedicated dedicated scientific teams. Where were these dedicated scientific teams the first time? I'd like to know that. Where were these dedicated teams, scientific teams, the first time when 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 they said to me, Brian, you need to take this shot. And we don't know what's in it. We don't know what's going to happen to you. And we don't know, we don't know anything, but we want you, we need you to take this and you're going to take it. Um, or you're not going to be able to go to work because I, I'm a truck driver and I'm an owner operator. And, and I, you know, my, my income and my job is, is the main livelihood of this household. Um, so now they've said, okay, you, you need to take this shot or you can't cross the border. You can't work. You can't go to work. You can't do your job. You can't drive your truck. Where were these scientists when they were telling me this? Nowhere in sight. Nowhere in sight. Funny how that happens. I don't know. Like, I'm not a conspiracist. I know. I'll, we'll get back to what I was talking to just a second ago. But we just lost the broadcast. And it wasn't because of something here. Like, the internet here is good. You know, the router is only 12 feet away from me right now. The signal's good. Everything is good. Um, but for some reason, and again, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, a theorist, but I don't know what it is. You know, you're sitting here talking about Justin Trudeau. You're talking about the liberals. You're talking about things that aren't popular, that are putting the government in a bad light. And all of a sudden you lose it. Like it shuts down. StreamYard shut down. StreamYard was shut off. I couldn't I couldn't log back into StreamYard. I had to go and actually log in through somebody else's name on my in, in my house and work my way that way to, to get back in. And it wouldn't let me log back in under myself. But we're back up and we're running. So um, what I was, <clears throat> excuse me, what I was talking about was, as I was reading the statement from from, from Health Canada, and uh, there was one last, one last, uh, one last part to this, one last paragraph to this. But what I was just saying, what I, would, what I think I was talking about just a few seconds ago was, these submissions are being reviewed on a priority basis by dedicated scientific teams. And where were these dedicated teams? These dedicated teams are nowhere in sight during the first round of shots. And I'm not convinced that their dedicated teams are here again now. I'm not convinced that this shot we're taking, there isn't more to it. Yeah, the shot's supposed to take care of the COVID lessen the symptoms of COVID, but it's not what's not in the shot to prevent the COVID. It's what else they're putting in the shot. Like they're, they're putting stuff in there that, that, you know, can entangle itself to your DNA. They're putting stuff in there that uh, changes the antibodies and things within your own metabolism, within your body. It's not what they're taking out. It's what they're putting in. It's what are they putting into us as a mass population? What is the government <clears throat> what is the government putting into us? Again, follow the line. So anyway, let's just read the last, the last part of this, and then we'll get off this. This is a little deep and a little scary, but vaccinations continue to be one of the most effective ways to protect ourselves against COVID-19. Now, what were we just talking about? What the hell were we just talking about? 
the best way to protect yourself is to keep yourself covered. This shot does not protect you from the virus. It does not protect you from the virus. I've said it now twice, three times from a virus. It will not protect you. You will get it. If I have it and you've got all 29 shots and 75 boosters and I cough on you, you're going to get it. You'll, you'll, you'll might survive a little better. You'll get through it a little better than somebody without it. But anyway, evidence indicates that, a <laughs> that, a evidence, oh, hold on. Evidence indicates that, uh, various of vaccines used in Canada are very effective at preventing severe illness, hospitalization, and death from COVID. Well, at least they got something right. That's true. It, 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 well, they're saying that's what it's there for. That It'll help you with that. Um, since the vaccine protection decreases over time, it has been six months since your last dose. Vaccination with the new formulation of COVID-19 vaccination vaccine is recommended to provide better protection against variants of concern. What do we think of that? It's what I think of that. It's what I think of that. Honestly, God. Zero faith, folks. I have zero faith in the government right now. I have zero faith in just <clears throat> Justin Trudeau and zero faith in the liberal government. Now, that's not to say that I'm jumping up and down going, oh, I've got all the faith in the world in Pierre Poliev. I don't. But I do like what the man is saying. And I'm not saying this because I'm boosting him or I'm pushing him or you know, it's not my agenda. My, my politics are my politics. But, but I want to tell you this, okay? Listen, at least listen to what Pierre is saying. Listen to what Jag Meat's saying. He's the NDP clown, clown head. Listen to what Trudeau's saying. He's the he's the puppet, the liberal puppet. Um, listen to what all these guys are saying, and then dig into what they're saying. Look behind the scenes, and then what I want you to do is I don't want you when it comes time to vote. I don't want you to vote for the one that you like the most. I want you to vote for the one you dislike the least. I'm not saying I love Pierre. Okay. But at least I dislike him the least out of the three that I have to choose from. If I had to put a level of trust out there, which is very hard for me, um, my level of trust would go to, to, to the conservative party. And that's just the way it is for me. Um, where you vote is entirely up to you, but I do encourage you to vote. Please vote when it comes time to do the federal elections this time. Trudeau won. Trudeau became the prime minister of this country. Believe this or not. Trudeau became the prime minister of Canada because he was young, good looking, sassy. He had the suave, you know, he had it. And he promised to legalize marijuana. He promised. Guys, I could have won the federal election and been the prime minister of Canada if I'd have, if I'd have promised to legalize marijuana. And that's how Trudeau won. He hit the 18 to 25 year base uh, age group demographic. That demographic, most of the time, when it comes to the federal elections, are is the highest demographic of people that do not vote in Canada, the 18 to 25. So what did Trudeau do? He promised to legalize weed. Who voted? All you guys that were 18 to 25 that are freaking paying a severe price for it now handed this ass hat the election. Did it to yourselves. You wanted legalized marijuana. Well, you got it. He did. He did legalize weed. He did a great job. I think he did a great job legalizing it. He's done a terrible job. Uh, not enforcing it, but I guess um, with with the with the way that, that 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 it's that it's legalized and the way it's run, um, it was supposed to be a savior for us for billions and billions of dollars for tax dollars. 
Well, if the, if the legalize, legalization of weed has, has raised billions and billions of tax dollars, I can tell you right now, they all went to the Ukraine. Just like that, right over my shoulder, there went your billions of dollars over to the Ukraine. So all of the legalized weed just went to the Ukraine. I dropped time, but we're not going to do it. So anyway, that's that's kind of where we're at with the, with the with the next round of shots. And I think what I'm trying to get here is I want you guys to just follow the lines of what's going on. We are in line, and the government is leading us. But where are they leading us? Okay, they're making us get shots. They're putting they're putting things that that nobody can tell tell you what's in them. They're putting these in our body. They're leading us down this path. They've taken away all of our guns. They've taken away a lot of our rights, our rights to protest, a lot of speak, um, our media, our social media um, is now governed by the government. It's watched, um, you know, nothing gets out without them seeing it. All of this is happening for a reason. And where is it going? Well, if you follow the follow this, there's probably about five or six or 10 or maybe even 15 more steps before we get to the end of where this is going. But the end game on all of this is it's going to be a one state run country. That's where Trudeau is taking this country. It's going to be a one state country. Now, who else is a one state country? Two of them right off the top of my head. There's North Korea. Dictator runs out country. The dear leader, whatever you want to call him. China. It's a one state country. You know, one state country. Um, Canada is going down that path. They are slowly taking away our rights. They're taking away things that make us who we are. So that when the time comes for them to pull the trigger and make this happen, we're all going to be sitting there going, you can't do this. We have our rights. We've got this. And they're going to go, no, you don't. No, you don't. Last year, you signed away this on Bill C-18. Oh, then, well, we've got this. No, you don't. You signed away on Bill C-17 or C-11 on that one. Oh, well, we've got all of those little teeny things that they, the bills that they've been passing and all the things they've been doing, they're taking away our rights very slowly, very slowly. And they're doing it in such small increments that nobody's noticing. And the, the small amount of people that are noticing don't have a big enough voice to kick up and go, hey, wait the F a minute here. And that's the problem. Because if, what would happen is if they tried to do all of this at once, take all of our rights, do our guns, take our land, do these camps that they've got, if they tried to do all of this at once, the people would revolt and go, absolutely not. It would come to a screeching halt. And we'd fight back. And the government doesn't want that. There's more of us than there is of them. That's the biggest problem the American government's got in the, in, in the U.S. There are more firearms in the private hands of, the, the, uh, of society in the United States, in, pri in the private sector, than there is in the military. The people of the United States have more guns than the freaking U.S. military does. So what did what Canada do? They figured, oh, well, so does Canada. There's only 37 million of us are around there. They're not a lot. But when you compare it to the size of the country and whatnot like that, if you, you want to disarm 37, you want to take away the guns. Why? Because when it comes time that Trudeau goes knocking on your door and says, oh, well, we're taking your, we're freezing your bank account. We're going to go to a one monetary, one dollar monetary system. Um, there's your health care. Everything is going to be all state run and everything like that. And you don't have a say in it. And if you're not a good little Canadian, we'll dictate whether you get free health care or whether you get this or that. If you're a bad Canadian, we'll make sure that, you know, you don't get this, you don't get that. We are going to make this a one state run country and there's nothing you can do about this. So unfortunately you can't do anything about it. And that is what we are doing. And that is where we were going and groceries have arrived. And Dar has some good news, but we'll get back to that in a minute. I'm more interested in the groceries because I'm starving. Anyway, when the trigger gets pulled and they knock on your door and they say all of this to you, the last thing they want is a 30-odd six pointing back at them. And that's why they're taking our guns.
that's the end of the day. That's why they're taking our guns. They're disarming us so that we can't revolt and defend ourselves when they come knocking. Anyway, I got one more quick thing. One more quick thing we're going to quickly talk about. Sorry, I know I said 20 minutes, but F 20 minutes. And this is another Trudeau. And this ain't a bash. This guy keeps doing this shit to himself. Okay. Trudeau put out a statement the other day. Um, and he said he's calling on the heads of all of the grocers. Grocers. And I mean like the, the grocery stores, the big chain grocery stores. Okay. He's calling on all of the heads, the presidents, the CEOs, and all of that. And he is expecting an answer by Thanksgiving on how to lower the cost of food. I'm going to let that sink in for a minute, guys. Trudeau is called in the heads of all of the major grocery chain stores. And he has said to them, I am giving you until Thanksgiving for you guys to come up with a plan to make food more affordable in Canada. Now, do I agree that food is expensive? Oh, hell yes. Dude, we're spending food money on food like like you've never like you've never seen. And we're not getting a lot for our in return. It's not a good investment buying food. <laughs> it goes right in the toilet, if you know what I mean. Literally. But is this the government? Sorry, is this the grocery store's job to make food a little more or a lot more affordable? Well, let me tell you something, okay? To a certain degree, maybe they could be kicking it in a bit and helping us out, okay? They really could. They could be kicking it in and going, okay, well, we don't need, you know, we don't need to make $2.2 billion on this quarter profit. We only need to make $2 billion. Let's take that other $200 million and kick it back out and, and lower the price of food. That sound reasonable? That sounds reasonable to me. They could if they wanted to, okay? But it's private business. The government has kicked in and said, we're making this your problem. Trudeau has created the problem. We cannot afford the food, the electricity, the gas, hydro, propane, medical. We can't afford it. He has created the problem in every single one of these areas. And now what's he doing? He's passing the buck. He's making it somebody else's problem to fix. Grocery, uh, grocery store owners or chain owners, you guys are now going to fix this. This is now your problem. You are going to fix this. You are going to make this right. Okay. Is that right? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That would be like Trudeau turning to me as a truck driver and saying, you know what? You're responsible. You Since you bring all the freight and everything like that, you're responsible for doing it cheaper so we can get the, the price of groceries even lower. Or we can get whatever is lower. That's like passing the buck on to me as the truck driver. Is that right? No. Can it be afforded? No. Can it be sustained? No. Are the grocery chain owners seriously going to do this? Well, it looks like now Trudeau's got a gun to their head. And I don't, I'm, I'm dying. He, they've got till Thanksgiving to come up with, uh, to come up with this, to come up with a plan. I am dying to see what the plan is going to be. So there's no end on this. I'm just throwing this at you to show you, this is what our government has done. It has created a problem so that we can't afford the groceries and the food and the gas and the, and everything else around. We can't afford, we can't afford to buy homes. You can't afford to buy. And it's the government that has done this to us. And now the government has turned around and made it somebody else's problem to fix. That cannot happen. Ladies and gentlemen, that can't not happen. And we need to know about this. So I'm letting you know about this. And we need to watch this because, like I said, we've got till Thanksgiving when this comes out, when this comes to fruition. The, the, the grocers need to have an answer by Thanksgiving. My opinion is I think the grocers are going to lawyer up and go like that. That's what they're going to tell Justin to do. That's just my opinion. If I was... One of these guys, that's what I, I'd lawyer up, do this, and then lower the prices and help people out and make, give myself some good PR. That's what I would be doing. Anyway, that's, uh, that's what I've got for today. You know what? I am just going to quickly uh, throw one quick thing at you. It, it's not just something to talk about. 
quick. Um, Canadian fuel. Now, this is diesel fuel, okay? Being Canadian. Oh, yeah, that's really good. I poke yourself in a white T-shirt with a pen. Um, being Canadian, I, uh, I, I usually have to buy diesel before I leave Canada to go down to the U.S. So I'm going to give you guys an idea of what we pay for fuel in, the, in, in Canada here, okay? So at the Flying J, everybody knows what a Flying J is. The Flying J in Napanee, uh, diesel fuel is $1.71 a liter. Now that's $1.71 a liter. Now that's $1.71 Canadian. Now, if I convert that Canadian on today's exchange rate, at 74 cents, 74 cents Canadian is one, or sorry, 74 cents American is one Canadian dollar. Okay. So on today's exchange rate, and today is the 15th, um, $1.71 a liter Canadian is $1.26 US. So for one liter of fuel, if I was buying it in American funds, it would be $1.26. So we take $1.26. U.S. Multiply that by 3.79. There's 3.79 liters in one gallon of fuel. Okay. So that comes out to $4.77 U.S. A, 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 a gallon. Now you go, no, that's not bad. You know, that's not bad. And it's not. When I'm in the States right now, you know, you guys are losing your shit over, over, you know, 450, 470, you know, five bucks. And rightly so, rightly so you should be for us. If we're getting it for, you know, if I'm getting fuel down there for 450, 420, I'm doing okay. <laughs> really? I am. But if I take that 477 us, that's us funds. Remember everything for me gets converted back into Canadian. So that $4 and 77 cents Canadian it's converted to or U.S. Sorry, four dollars and seventy-seven cents U.S. per gallon. Converted back for me is six dollars and forty-five cents Canadian. Six dollars and forty-five cents Canadian. And then you wonder why I push and I push. I've pushed everybody I know, and I fight tooth and nail for it. Why we are pushing for fuel-efficient trucks? Um, doesn't mean I'm fighting for trucks with death, and I'm, but I am. I have a. I argue the fact that aerodynamic, fuel efficient trucks, eight and a half to nine mile per gallon trucks, is the only way you're going to survive and make money as an owner operator or as a fleet or anything like that. Because we are paying six dollars and forty five cents a freaking gallon in Canada for fuel. A lot of the times I put enough fuel in my truck just to get me to, especially if I know where I'm going into the U.S. I know where the nearest cheapest fueling is. I'll put enough fuel in my truck in Canada to get me over the border just to get down there. Anyway, that's what I got. You know what, guys? Uh, hopefully this got you where you were going. Um, I appreciate you guys hanging out. Uh, give me your comments. I want your comments. I want to know what you're thinking. I want to know what you think. If you don't agree with anything I've said, I want to hear it. If you agree with me, I want to hear it. Uh, if you think I'm full of it, tell me. Um I'm going to do, uh, we're going to, we're going to kick out a podcast, uh, probably once a week, um, just to start and we'll see how we go with this. Um, I've got some people that I'd like to bring in on some of these podcasts and we're going to talk, we're going to discuss certain things. Um, for the beginning, uh, I think we're going to discuss mostly, uh, Canadian, um, politics, uh, affairs and stuff like that. It's going to be a mostly a Canadian based, um, but we are going to slowly transition over and we're going to drag the Americans into this as well, because uh, you guys are a big part of, like I said earlier, whatever happens to you happens to us. In this case here, it seems to be whatever is happening to us is going to eventually happen to you. So with that guys, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you later and see you down the road.